in the previous two videos i talked about the platelet disorders that are related to causes of bleeding okay and i told you that the causes of bleeding are hematological and non-hematological uh, the non-hematological are vascular and the hematological are either related to the primary hemostasis of or the platelets okay or the secondary hemostasis or the coagulopathy the primary hemostasis disorders the platelets i talked about them and i'm going to move to the secondary hemostasis disorder that are related to the coagulopathy okay they are they are divided into three groups the hemophilia that are related to the factors clotting factors eight and nine the von Willebrand disease uh, obviously related to von Willebrand deficiency or problem with it okay and the thrombotic uh, diseases thrombosis diseases okay i'll start with the hemophilia in this video okay hemophilia actually is the most common severe inherited bleeding disorders so it is inherited disorders okay the vulnerable disease actually is not inherited so it's a congenital disorder and the most common congenital disorders uh, bleeding disorder is vulnerable disease okay but inherited is the hemophilia hemophilia actually is inherited as an x link oops x link uh, recessive okay x link recessive so it's x links recessive so uh, the daughters will be affected more than or the girls uh, will be uh, just a carrier the males will be affected because the males have two x's okay and it's autosomal recessive so they should have two uh, recessive uh, genes so if the mother is on the only affected one so it's impossible to have a daughter that are affected okay the both parents should be affected to have a daughter that affected in normal cases we have just the mother uh, affected uh, or okay and the or the mother is a carrier and the males or the sons of them will be affected because they only need one uh, abnormal gene that are uh, on the X chromosome to be affected. So, so the important thing is, is X-link uh, disorder, recessive, okay, and uh, the males are much more affected. Sometimes we have uh, carrier females, sometimes we have uh, carrier females that are symptomatic, okay. So this is uh, what to talk about. Now, let's move to uh, the details of the hemophilia we have two types of hemophilia hemophilia a and hemophilia b hemophilia a is much more common it is one for each uh, five thousand one case for uh, five thousand cases okay and the hemophilia b is one case for twenty five thousand persons so it's less okay hemophilia a is about factor a deficiency and i told you in the previous videos in the first video of this stream that the factor it is a part of the intrinsic pathway okay hemophilia p is factor 9 deficiency and also factor 9 is a, a, a factor of intrinsic pathway so you can't distinguish whether we have hemophilia a or b just when you go to therapy you have to swing it to, to dis distinguish because the replacement therapy of the factors uh, de uh, de depends on this okay so they are indistinguish indistinguishable other than the therapy okay so what really happens here is the deficiency in factor 8 or factor 7 will lead to delay in the generation of thrombin okay because as you know the factor 8 and factor 9 normal cases or normal hemostasis will activate factor 10 and the activated factor 10 will uh, produce thrombin from prothrombin okay and the thrombin will uh, convert the plasminogen into plasmin so if we have a deficiency in factor 8 or factor 9 we have deficiency in the or delay in the generation of thrombin and that will lead to less fibrin okay this the result end result of this is no solidification of the plated plug in the injury areas okay because the fibrin is an important factor or component in the solidification of the platelet plug if we have an injury okay so the, se the severity of the hemophilia is determined by the degree of the clotting factors deficiency how much 
factor eight we have deficiency how much deficiency in factor nine we have okay so this is this will determine the severity of the hemophilia clinically okay we have three uh, severity grades of hemophilia we have the mild moderate and severe if we have less than one percent of the requested uh, factor eight or so factor seven then we have very severe hemophilia okay we have very low levels of factor eight factor seven less than one percent if we have between one percent to five percent factor eight and or factor seven we have moderate hemophilia okay moderate hemophilia if we have more than five percent factor five seven we have a mild hemophilia and the, the clinical differences between those three types are that in severe hemophilia we have a spontaneous bleeding with a, with or with minor trauma so you, you don't do not need to have a trauma to have a bleeding in severe hemophilia the patient the child will bleed by himself without predisposing trauma or surgery and so on okay in moderate hemophilia you have to have a trauma but the trauma just should be moderate trauma okay is needed to have a bleeding in mild hemophilia actually we have a significant trauma uh, requested to have a bleeding okay so in the severe hemophilia uh, maybe <coughs> oops okay here we have something wrong okay in severe hemophilia it manifests usually in the muscles and joints okay and it at first appears at a toddler stage when the baby or the child uh, walks okay so we have the manifestation of severe hemophilia and the mild hemophilia actually it may be undiagnosed for many years we may have many years of no symptoms okay maybe diagnosed accidentally Okay, in severe hemophilia, the manifestation is mostly the hemoarthrosis. Hemoarthrosis, the bleeding that happens in the uh, joints due to the hemophilia. I will show you this video pretty good to understand that. Now let us look at the blood vessel from a little distance in order to localize it better. As we see, this blood vessel is situated in a joint, such as the knee. In the case of hemophilia, the blood flow from the breach in the wall of the blood vessel will, in a way, inundate the joint space. This flow of blood will have several consequences. First, the synovial membrane lining the joint will act as a sponge and absorb this blood. This, in turn, produces hypertrophy of the synovial membrane. On the other hand, our body will attempt to eliminate this blood by producing inflammatory mediators which will also cause erosion of the bony cartilage. The hypertrophic synovial membrane itself also contains numerous small blood vessels. If pinched, these small vessels will rupture and cause more bleeding. This initiates a vicious circle, resulting in new joint degradation followed by functional problems which can become irreversible. To conclude, this coagulation disorder is called haemophilia, a hereditary disease affecting males, transmitted by women and characterized by a more or less severe factor 8 or 9 deficiency. Okay, so this is what happens to joints in hemophilia. Now let's move to the diagnosis of uh, hemophilia. How to diagnose it? Actually, we diagnose hemophilia by activated partial thromboplastin time. Okay, activated partial thromboplastin time. Okay, is very important to diagnose hemophilia. The idea behind the activated partial thromboplastin time that they take a blood from the blood sample okay and they withdraw calcium from it and phosphorus so that it will not coagulate okay and after that they put it into other tube okay and they add calcium they add phosphorus and they add other things that uh, will lead to uh, artificial coagulation of the blood 
okay and they will see how uh, much time it take to coagulate okay so normally the activated partial thromboplastin time it takes 25 to 40 seconds okay to coagulate in in patient beyond neonates okay in neonates takes more time okay 70 seconds in neonates to coagulate so if we have more than this time is needed to coagulate 25 to 40 uh, seconds or 70 in neonates then we have a prolonged uh, thrombo uh, partial thromboplastin time and that indicates something wrong uh, with uh, factor 8 factor 9 or the intrinsic pathway in general or in the common pathway of factor 10 and factor 5 okay so if we have prolonged activated partial thromboplastin 9 so we have to suspect the deficiency in factor 8 factor 9 factor 10 factor 5 intrinsic and common pathway okay and the fibrinogen of course normally remember 25 to 40 percent seconds and 70 second in neonates then after we do the activated partial thromboplastin time so and we have a prolonged activated partial thromboplastin time the next step to determine what specifically is the uh, factors that have deficiency okay so we do what we call specific factor assays if specific factors assay and specific factor assay is to make a precise diagnosis of which factor exactly is the responsible for the manifestations of hemophilia okay we know whether it is factor 8 or factor 9 okay and this is to determine the appropriate factor replacement therapy the treatment of hemophilia so let's get into the treatment of hemophilia actually the main line of treatment of hemophilia is the replacement therapy okay and the excellent to care of hemophilia because we have deficiency in factor 8 and factor 9 the most obvious uh, solution is to give one of them the one that is deficient okay so in the cases of acute bleeding we have a home control okay we uh, treat or the uh, we train the uh, caregiver of the patient to how to treat the patient okay and this is only we uh, we have home control only if we have a patient with appropriate age and the caregiver is well trained to treat the patient the bleeding associated with surgery trauma and dental extraction of patient to have a bleeding disorders uh, hemophilia okay so we have to suspect in surgery and trauma and dental extraction to have we have to anticipate uh, to have excessive bleeding okay and we can prevent that by appropriate replacement therapy of factor 8 and factor 10 okay what about the likelihood of chronic arthropathy as I told you the arthropathy is suspected in hemophilia what to do about that you have to give prophylactic therapy starting in infancy okay so let's get back to the acute bleeding if we have a life threatening bleeding we have to stabilize the patient okay and we have to give about 80 to 100 percent of normal factor 8 and 9 okay 80 to 100 percent in mild and moderate bleeding and hemothrosis we give only 40 percent of factor 8 or 30 percent of factor 9 okay so remember in life threatening condition we give to 80 to 100 percent of the factor 8 and 9 in mild to moderate you give only 30 uh, of factor 8 and 30 of factor 9 how to calculate the dose that should be given okay we know the percentage of factors that should be given but how to calculate the number of the, uh, the dose that we given each one unit per kg of factor it is given will raise two percent of factor eight, plasma factor at level so we multiply the desired level okay for example we have a mild to moderate bleeding we need 40 percent only of factor eight okay we multiply the factor eight by for example we have 10 kilogram baby okay by the uh, by uh, 0.5 okay or 0.5 this is if we want to replace the factor 8 factor 8 this is how to replace factor 8 the desired level okay remember multiply by the weight in kgs okay multiply by 
uh, 0.5 if in factor 9 replacement uh, we give the desire level multiply by okay in factor 9 efficiency would uh, multiply desire level in percentage okay by the weight per kg by 1.45 so the only difference uh, between uh, the factor 8 and factor uh, factor 9 replacement okay the equation in factor 8 is to multiply the weight and the desire level by 0.5 in factor uh, 9 we multiply it by 1.5 because uh, one unit of factor uh, 8 uh, equal more than percentage of one unit of factor 9 so just remember the equations okay remember them okay so what other things can be given uh, okay before that uh, one of the complications or the complications of the uh, plasma donor uh, factors is to have HIV infection, hepatitis B, C, D, and other viral infections. Actually, this is very serious because HIV is the most common cause of death in patients and old patients that have hemophilia replacement uh, therapy. Okay, uh, plasma donating. And recombinant, uh, recombinant technique is safe. Okay, is associated with this. Uh, viral infections we also can treat in mild and moderate cases with what we call dismopressine acetate uh, actually dismopressine acetate is a uh, uh, analog to the vasopressin okay it triplicate or quadruplate the factor 8 okay just only factor 8 and not factor 9 so the dismopressine acetate is only to treat hemophilia A it can treat hemophilia uh, uh, B okay and it is only used in mild to moderate hemothrosis in severe cases we only use the replacement therapy with factor 8 and factor 9 so remember this more is for mild and moderate cases okay and in hemophilia A and not B uh, amino carboric acids uh, decrease the fibrinolysis lysis and may help in oral bleeding if we have oral bleeding due to hemophilia we can use amino uh, carpenteric acid okay decrease the fibrinolysis so it will bring the time of bleeding inhibitors sometimes we have uh, what we call inhibitors or resistant to uh, the replacement therapy why because we have igg antibodies that are directed against the transfused factor 8 and less to factor 9 so we have antibodies that will uh, attack the factors 8 and nine to less extent okay factor is the most important it will attack it and uh, prevent it from the act that should act okay so what to do in these cases uh, if we have a low titer antibodies or low inhibitors of the factor eight we can continue giving factor eight infusion uh, more doses okay and uh, if we have a high titer of antibodies that can we can't cope with uh, we have to uh, give a product that bypass the uh, inhibited factor 8 okay we give factor 7a so if we have a hemophilia and we treat with replacement therapy of factor 8 and factor 7 and there is no response then we have respect to suspect that we have inhibitors of the factor 8 and factor 9 okay the igg antibodies that destruct the factor 8 and 9 that are uh, given okay so what to do if we have a low titer of the antibodies we continue giving a uh, factor 8 with uh, higher doses if we have a high titer that we it is impossible to have effect of factor 8 factor 9 we give something that bypass the factor 8 effect and the inhibitors about bypass the inhibitors okay we give factor 7 a factor 7 so the conclusion factor if we have uh, unresponsive uh, hemophilia to replacement therapy with factor 8 factor 9 give factor 7 a factor 7 a so this is all about hemophilia and the next video i'm going to talk about the vulnerable parentheses